Hey everybody and welcome to another video. I am Corinne Blackstone and I'm so excited that you are here today. Before we get started, be sure to check out my website, CorinneBlackstone.com. You can sign up for my free newsletter and find lots of other great things over there. Today's video is really fun. This is one that I was inspired by. I saw something similar in a shop and I thought, you know what? I can make that and I can make it more into my style. So we are going to make this adorable DIY snowman kit. This is really easy and you only need a few supplies. You can do this really inexpensively and these sell so well. So if you are somebody who does craft shows and things like that, these type of decor items really do very, very well. All you're gonna need is a shadow box, some vinyl, cardstock, and some fake snow. Just a few supplies, you can really make these very, very cute items, and you can really make them your own as well. I've seen people use real buttons and things like that in the snow, so it's really up to you and how you want to do it. Let's get started. I'm going to take you over to Cricut Design Space and show you how you can design and make your own DIY snowman kit. Let's go. In Cricut Design Space, the first thing that we're going to do is make a template. So while our shadow box says that it's nine by nine, it's actually only really about eight and a half, just slightly under. So what we're gonna do is open up a shape and open up a square. This is just gonna help us make sure we have everything sized the way we want it to. So I'm gonna make my square about 8.4. That's pretty much about the size I have to work with with my design. Now I am going to change the color of this just to make it a little bit easier to see. I like to just kind of change that color up just a smidge. Now we're going to use some shapes and other things to create our snowman. So the first thing that we're going to do is just add a circle. This is really simple. This is just going to be for his eyes. So I'm just going to size it kind of to however big I want it right now and I'm just going to duplicate. Those are just gonna be our eyes and we'll mess around with everything here in just a second. But the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna go into images and I wanna search for carrot. So let's see if we find anything in the world of the carrot that might work for his carrot nose. I'm sure we've got something that we can use but we'll need to kind of click through and see what we've got. This little nose actually looks really perfect. So let's go ahead and select that. Now you, now you could just grab one from Google or wherever, but we'll just use one from Design Space. Now, obviously this is way too big, so we'll size it down a bit so it looks a little more in proportion to our face. Now I am lining it up right now just to kind of get an idea for kind of where the sizing needs to be, and we'll resize it as we go, because we are gonna change it up a little bit just to kind of get an idea of how we're gonna lay all of this out. So. What I want this to say is the do-it-yourself snowman kit, some assembly required. So I know that I want do-it-yourself to be in all of the same font. So I'm just gonna make that one line and that's just gonna be our top line. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose a font, but sometimes scrolling through the system fonts can be really annoying. So I'm gonna show you a quick trick to help yourself find the font you want. There's a website called wordmark.it. Now you might need to install a extension for your browser, but it's totally fine, totally safe. So what you're gonna do is just type in whatever you want your text to say, and then click this little arrow. It's gonna bring up previews for all the fonts that you have on your computer. And let's say we like this one. Just go ahead and click on it and scroll through and you can find other ones that you like. Now I do kind of want this to look like it was written by a kid because I think that would be kind of cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through some of these and find a couple and then I'll show you guys how you can look at them all together. So once I've found a couple that I wanna take a look at, I think I'll add this one too, you can see right here it says filter selected fonts, go ahead and click on that. What that's gonna do is bring up all the fonts that you chose. So now you can kind of go through and see which ones you don't like. So I don't really like this Moonflower, and I kind of don't like Oh Wonder. This looks a little bit too clean, and so does this one, as does the Cold Brew. So now I'm kind of down to these couple of fonts. So I don't know that I like the text of Indie Flower, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. I don't really like this Typewrite one, so get rid of that. So I'm kind of down to these five. So again, this is a great way to choose your font. So I don't know that I like the capital letters. 
being the entire thing. I don't love that. So now we're kind of between a little sunshine, Kristen ITC, little clusters, and Wonder Night. So I think Wonder Night looks a little too neat, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I think the D on this one bothers me, so I'm going to get rid of that. So I think I'm going to stick with Little Clusters Reg Demo right here because I like the thickness of the font. So we can go back over to Cricut Design Space and choose our font. So over here in Cricut Design Space, just select the text and over in your font selection, go to System Fonts and you can just type in the name or part of the name of your font. So we're using this Little Clusters Reg Demo. I will link all the fonts that I'm using down below for you guys so that you can use them if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and size this down a little bit. And I do want it to take up a decent amount of room, but it doesn't need to take up the whole thing because we're gonna put some more words right here. Right here, it's gonna say snowman kit. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose another font because I want snowman to be in a different font. Now, the typical rule is that you don't wanna go more than three fonts on a design. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. I wanna do something um, with, I think I wanna use a script font for this. So again, I can go back to the word market or I can just kind of look at them because I kind of knew which one I was thinking of. And I kind of like this one, which is the um, Austin Hearts. There's two versions of this. And again, I'll link all of these down below. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna make this red. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this now to red so that I can kind of get a look at what my design is gonna look like. And then the next word that I wanna do is kit. Now I'm gonna do that all in capitals and I'm gonna do that in the little clusters as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and look up little. So again, I'm gonna use the little cluster reg demo. Now I don't know if I like that font for this because it's a little bit tall and I think making it any smaller is gonna look weird. So if that doesn't work, again, you don't wanna do more than three fonts, but that's okay, we can definitely choose a different font. So for this, you'll want to do something that's a little bit more plain and even. So that being said, you want to do something that's very straight, something that is more of a, what I would call a corporate style font, something you would use on a resume or on a paper that you're turning in to your professor, something like that. But I think this font works pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color on this font as well, and I'll change that to red. And then we can always change stuff up if we decide we don't like it. So the next thing we're gonna do is add that last bit of text, which is gonna say some assembly required. And for this, it's really big. So um, we will size this down, don't worry, but I am gonna change the font on this to that little clusters again and see if that works. If not, we may need to change some fonts and things like that, but don't worry. You can definitely just change it up to whatever you like. There's no right or wrong way to make this. You do it how you want to. It's totally up to you and the way you want it to look. Now I am gonna need to size this down a bit and I do wanna make this just a little bit smaller. I think that looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is kind of size our snowman pieces down. I really want this part to be pretty large and I don't mind the snowman pieces being a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete one of the circles and I'm gonna size my carrot down a little bit because we are gonna have that fake snow and glitter inside of this. So that's something to keep in mind. So you'll wanna leave some open space where you can see that you don't wanna fill this whole thing up. I think that looks like a pretty good size for everything. So I'm gonna duplicate his eye. And you guys can add anything that you want to this. If you wanted to add a little hat or something like that, you can absolutely do that. You could add a little snowflake somewhere, whatever you wanna do. But this is our setup for our snowman kit. I think this came out really cute and it's gonna be pretty easy. But I'm gonna show you a couple things that you'll need to do before we move on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide the square template. We don't really need it anymore. We're not gonna cut it out. So go ahead and just click the eyeball and it will hide that. The next thing that I would like to do is I'm going to select my Austin hearts and I'm gonna actually weld this. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that none of my letters fill in when I get it welded. Sometimes if the letters are too close together, 
it'll fill a letter in and you'll need to move them apart, but it didn't, so that looks really good. Now I'm gonna select the word kit and the word snowman, and what I'm going to do is align them central. That way I know that everything's nice and centered, and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach. What attach does is it holds them in place so that they don't move. That way they are centered, you don't have to worry about moving them or anything like that. Now the rest of this stuff I'm gonna leave as is for now and click make it. Now one thing I wanna point out, if you looked at our screen, it really looked like our eyes and our text is the same color and they really look very similar. But for some reason, it's putting them on two different mats because Cricut Design Space thinks that they're two different colors. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is hit cancel. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. If it's separating things that should be the same color, easy to do this, just go to Color Sync up at the top of your Cricut Design Space here in the Layers tab. And then all you'll need to do is drag and drop the pieces onto the same line as the pieces that you want them to be the same color. So I just dragged my eyes to where you can see the D and little parenthesis, and now everything will be the same color. So now when I click make it, instead of having four mats with two gray mats, I'm actually gonna only have three mats. Now you'll see that we have three mats. Now I am gonna move my eyes over a little bit. They're a little close to my do it yourself part, and I'm gonna move some assembly required down just a little bit. That way when we cut them apart, we're not gonna risk cutting any vinyl. And honestly, if you wanna save that much vinyl, it's fine if you wanna leave them that way, but the vinyl cost isn't really worth it to me. Now we're gonna cut this with a StarCraft SD, and we are going to use black, red, and orange to do this. And then we're gonna put these on to our shadow box. Then I'll show you guys how to fill it and how to cover the back with the white paper, and we'll be all done. We're using a StarCraft SD for this, so I'm gonna use a green mat. And all I'm gonna do is go ahead and load my vinyl. And this is permanent vinyl, so you load it vinyl side up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and load this on to my mat. Make sure it is well stuck down. And then I'm gonna load it, and we'll let the Cricut cut it out. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do after we have went ahead and weeded everything is to apply it to our shadow box. Now I like to apply mine with my glass still in the frame because it will help you make sure that you're not going to get it outside of the frame anywhere. We're going to be using some StarCraft medium transfer tape. This is a new product and I'm really pleased with it. It's super easy to use. It is a really nice transfer tape. I would say this and the medium tack from 143 Vinyl are both great and super easy to work with options. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and roll out some transfer tape. And I don't really care if I reuse transfer tape most of the time. So I just am going to go ahead and stick this all on and it'll be fine. You can reuse it if you want to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of put it all on. And I did get a little bit of a wrinkle here, so we can easily fix that. We're just gonna go ahead and pop that off. There we go. And then stick this one right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this around my decals. Just pull that out just a little bit more. Once we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it the correct way so it's up. And I'm gonna go ahead and burnish from this side first. And just give it a quick little push. Then what I like to do is I actually am gonna go ahead and cut this apart as I work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top and that's gonna be the do-it-yourself part. So I'm just cutting it off right where it says do-it-yourself. And I'm just going to trim my transfer tape around that. So there is our do-it-yourself part, and that's going to sit right up here at the top. So what I'm going to do is burnish this from the back really quickly. 
and then I fold my paper over and peel it from the back just like this where I'm kind of giving it a sharp angle for the vinyl to come off of it. You don't want to like pull it like this, although this works on this vinyl most of the time. You want to try to peel it at a much sharper angle. So once I've gotten this, now I probably am going to need to trim the top of it just a little bit off of the transfer tape just because it's going to sit on the frame and get a little bit in our way. So I'm going to trim that off and toss that to the side. So then all we have to do is take our decal and figure out where center is. You can measure, you can kind of do whatever you want to do, figure it out however you want to figure out which way it goes. But I think that was pretty close. And honestly, if it's not 100% straight, that's fine because I do want this to look like a kid wrote it. So that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and gently burnish. You want to be gentle because you are working with glass and you don't want to crack it. So gently burnish it and then you're going to peel your transfer tape off. Now, if you have a little bit of a stubborn letter that maybe doesn't want to stick, again, just like you did with taking it off of the backing, you're going to peel your transfer tape at a really sharp angle. Now, because I can't push really, really hard on this glass, and I did pre-clean this with some alcohol, I am going to go really, really slow with this and just make sure that all the pieces and parts of my letters are going to stay down. Now, I kind of knew that this would be a little bit more difficult leaving the glass on the um, frame, but I really prefer to do it that way because it's a little bit easier for me to make sure that I don't put it under where the frame sits because there is quite a bit of glass behind the frame for this one. So it really just depends on your frame and how it sits. But for this one, there's a decent amount of glass behind it. So I just wanted to make sure that I was right where I wanted to be. Now, the next part I'm going to do is the sum assembly required portion because that's going to be our bottom line. And that one is going to go all the way down here at the bottom. And then we can kind of figure out where everything else is going to sit based on that. So again, I'm going to give this a quick burnish from the front and then I'll flip her over. I'm going to give it a burnish from the back making sure I got all the little pieces parts and then I'm going to peel back my backing. So again, by just folding it over at a sharp angle, like I said, most of the time this really does like to stick. So you can go pretty quickly with this part and you shouldn't have any issues. Now I do have a piece of backing stuck to my transfer tape. I'm just going to leave it. It won't stick to my shadow box. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and burnish this down again, making sure not to press it too terribly hard because it is glass and we don't want it to crack. So then we're going to go ahead and peel this up. Now this one is probably going to give us the same problems because we can't burnish super duper hard. So just keep that in mind when doing this, that you may end up with some letters that want to lift, but if you go really slow, you shouldn't have a problem. Now I should have trimmed the bottom off a little bit more but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this peeled off and then we can assemble the rest of the d decal. Now that we have this portion on, we can move on to the next part. So the next part I'm gonna do is the part that says snowman kit. And the reason I'm gonna do that one next is because we can really set the eyes and the nose anywhere that we so desire. So our snowman kit is going to go up towards the top. So again, I'm going to go ahead, flip it over and burnish it from the back. Give it a nice burnish. And then again, just peeling it from the backing. So for this part, it's going to go under the words, do it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of line this up where I want it to go. I think that looks pretty good. Now I do have a little bit of a wrinkle because I am not, <clears throat> not always fantastic at putting these down. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and burnish down snowman. And then I'm going to fix where I have kit because I made a mistake. I do have it down a little bit too wrinkly and so it's going to bug me if it's got a big wrinkle in it. So we're going to try to salvage it. We should be okay. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull my transfer tape up and you'll see that the letters somewhat wanted to stay on the transfer tape. So if you get a wrinkle, what you can do is just work your vinyl a little bit with your pin pen to loosen it from your glass, just like that. 
And then I'm just gonna do the same with the T. And I see that my end decided to stick and I didn't notice. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fix him. I'm gonna just go ahead and put him back down. I might need to fix him a little bit, but that's okay. This happens. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> and this transfer tape is really good for this. Like when this kind of stuff happens, it's real easy to kind of fix using your transfer tape. So all I'm gonna do is just peel that kit up. And sometimes if you need to recut something, you've got too much of a wrinkle, it's totally okay. It's not a big deal because I can see that I have quite the wrinkle in the T. So I'm just gonna peel him off the transfer tape a little bit and use my finger and just make sure to flatten him back out. So I just wanna kinda make sure that he is sitting as flat as can be on that. All right, that looks good. Now we fixed it. Okay, that happens. And like I said, I'm gonna come back and fix the end. I got a little bit of a wrinkle in the end. No big deal, it happens, it's totally fine. And then like I said, sometimes it doesn't always wanna stick. So sometimes that can be a good thing if you get a little bit of a wrinkle. So I'll go ahead and pop that off. And then all I'm gonna do, I got a little wrinkle in this end portion down here. I'm just gonna peel it off and then you can kind of play with it using your finger and your pin pen and just flatten it back out. So these ones I'm not really gonna do a whole lot with because I'm just gonna set them out kind of just wherever I feel like they should go. Cause I don't want it to be straight. I want it to kind of look like he melted a little bit or like he needs to be put together. So I'm just gonna kind of put his nose right there. So there is his little nose and then we'll do his eyes. Now I'm gonna do his eyes two separate places. So I'm just gonna fold the backing over so that it's protecting the one eye and leave the adhesive side of the other eye. So I think I'll put one like here. And again, just kind of pressing it down with my finger. I didn't need to do too much with that. And then I think I'll put his other eye maybe up here. I don't want it to look like a snowman. So I want it to kind of be really off-centered and off-putting in a way, so it looks kind of melty. I think that looks pretty good. Now what we'll need to do is get the fake snow and the glitter and we can get everything put together. Now that you've got this all uh, ready, so we disassembled, so this does have a couple of parts. It's got your main frame and then it has a little spacer frame inside of it. And then the last piece is the backing. And this usually just has like the little label on it and then some uh, little pins. I actually save those pins. They are quite handy. I use them in lots of different things, but especially for crochet, they're really, really great to hold things down. So we'll go ahead and set those off to the side. So this is our backer. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut out some of this silver cardstock. Now you could 100% have your Cricut cut this out. It's really up to you, but you don't need to. You can just cut it out by yourself by hand. So all I'm going to do is line this up with one corner and then I'm just going to trace a quick little line around it. And all I'll do is just cut those lines. Like I said, you could use the Cricut. I just choose not to, but do be careful because the edges of the glass are quite sharp. So be careful when you are lifting that up. And I'm just going to go ahead and I just cut just a little bit outside the line. You can always trim it down if you need to. And honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect because this will be hidden behind the spacer. So no one's really going to see the edge of your paper. So I wouldn't worry too much. You just want to get it pretty close to the right size. So once I've done that, I'm going to slide those off to the side and we are going to fill this with the snow. So what I like to do is I just double check, make sure he looks pretty clean. Now I did use this glass for something else and he's not uh, perfectly clean, but it'll do. But you can just do some Windex on it and get it clean. So now what you're going to do is take your frame and flip it upside down. And you want to make sure your paper's not stuck under there because you're going to need that in a second. Go ahead and put your glass in. And just carefully slide that in. Mine keeps getting stuck on the little things. Okay. Then what you're gonna do is put in your spacer. Now not all frames have the spacer, but this one does. So you're gonna wanna make sure to put that in. And then we're gonna use some of this fake snow. I've used this before. You can find this at most craft stores and this stuff is pretty messy, but I do love it. It works great for these kinds of projects. It is really pretty and it is also quite staticky. So just keep that in mind. So all I'm gonna do is just sprinkle some in here 
and I just want to make sure that I sprinkle quite a bit because I do want a decent amount of coverage at the bottom and you have to remember that it's going to fill in all the thickness. So like I said, this stuff does tend to get staticky. You can use your finger to help it kind of come out. I didn't cut a really big hole in here because I didn't want to have to deal with all of the snow everywhere, but you can see it like sticks to your hands. So just keep that in mind when you're working with this. It does tend to kind of get everywhere, no matter how hard you try to keep it in one spot. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of push this down and kind of see about where we're looking like it's going to sit. It looks pretty good. I think I want to add a little bit more because again, it is going to need to fill in some space. So keep that in mind when you're putting this through. You don't want to do like a really thin layer. That's why I'm kind of pushing it all down to the bottom and just seeing how thick of a layer I have. So that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just try to dust my hand off best I can into my shadow box. That'll do. It's better than nothing. Then what you're going to do is take your silver paper and you can go ahead and just make sure any of that snow is on the inside here. You're going to take your silver paper. Now this one has two sides, so I want to make sure I had the silver side down first. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put my frame backing on the correct direction. Press it down and then push my little tabs down. And like I said, this stuff does tend to get everywhere. Like I said, it's all over my hands. It's stuck to everything. But we'll just bring a little vacuum in and it'll be fine. So all I'm going to do now is just tap this down a little bit before we reveal. And there is our snowman kit. How fun is this? It's super fun, super easy. Let me show you guys a good view of this. Here is the finished DIY snowman kit. I think this turned out really, really cute. And as you guys saw, it was pretty easy to do. You can really make it your own using your own specific fonts, your own little snowman shapes, and really making it however you want to. This was pretty inexpensive, like I said at the beginning, so you can absolutely find these shadow boxes on sale at Michael's. They'll usually do buy one, get two free, which is always a great deal. And you can get that little fake snow, pretty inexpensive at your local craft store as well. And then I just used some StarCraft HD vinyl for my sign here, but you could use SD, you could use removable, it doesn't really matter. This is not something that's going to go in the wash, so it's okay to use removable vinyl on something like this. I know you guys ask that a lot. So something like this is something I would recommend that you could do removable vinyl on. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting!